Today we're going to talk about uniform circular motion. We're going to use the example of our monstrous badger. We're going to contend with both kinematics and dynamics of uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion. We're moving in a circle. The uniform part means constant speed. You see often abbreviated UCM. So kinematics, we first want to describe the motion. So we're going in a circular path with constant speed. The magnitude of the velocity stays constant, even though the direction of the velocity is changing. Here's our badger, monstrous badger. I put him on a little platform so you can see his position easily. And I'm putting him on a turntable. This is basically a special rotating table, lazy Susan kind of thing here. You can see, I can side view here. I can put the badger on, and the badger basically takes a circular path as the table spins. Oops, sorry about that. So here comes the badger around, spinning around on the turntable, making a circular path as he goes around. And I'm going to try to keep the speed as constant as I can. There's a little bit of friction in the bearing, so I can't keep it perfectly constant, but I'll try. So let's describe the motion. The badger, there he is. I'm looking at him from above, is taking a circular path around as the turntable moves. So he's on a path, he's moving at any given instant, he has a velocity in the forward direction, and he's sitting at a radius from the center. So velocity V and radius R as he travels with uniform speed. So at any point on the path, the velocity corresponds to a tangent vector with constant magnitude and the radius is given as r. Okay, so what can we say about this motion kinematically? If it is true that we have universe, uniform circular motion, then we know what the acceleration is. The acceleration is, points, is a vector that points to the center of the circle. It points to the center of the circle. We call that centripetal, towards the center. And we know its magnitude. The magnitude of the acceleration, which we call the centripetal acceleration, is v squared over r. a sub c equals v squared over r. Centripetal acceleration. The acceleration points to the center. Its magnitude is constant, and it's v squared over r toward the center. That's our kinematic description of the motion. We haven't explained. We're explaining how it moves. And every time I have UCM, I know immediately, always, always, that A sub C is equal to V squared over R. Okay, what about the dynamics of uniform circular motion? How can we tackle uniform circular motion problems applying Newton's second law? Well, let's see. First of all, we've already shown you a top view, but let's like zoom in on the, let's think really carefully about what's going on with the top view. There's the turntable itself, and on the turntable, is the badger, and the badger is moving on a circular path of radius r with velocity v, constant speed. Uh, we could take a side view of the same situation, so basically now we're looking at the turntable from the side, so it's the badger sitting on the turntable, um, gravity is down now, at a radius r, and he's spinning from left to right. So that's the bird's eye view, that's the top side view. And in each case, the acceleration is towards the center. Always acceleration towards the center with magnitude v squared over r. So we follow our recipe. We know the acceleration. Let's draw a free body diagram of the badger to figure out what the horizontal forces are on the badger. Well, vertical forces are easy. Weight and normal, they're equal and cancel each other out. That's not so interesting. What about the horizontal direction? Well, the centripetal acceleration is to the left. We know that there's a net force to the left, and the only force that can be is the force of friction because it's parallel to the surface. We've got to put a coordinate system in. I want the coordinate system to point in the direction of acceleration, point to the left. So we'll call the vertical position coordinate Y, but I'm going to do a trick here. I'm going to call the horizontal coordinate C horizontal coordinate C for centripetal. 
In other words, instead of x or y, I will use c whenever I have centripetal uh, coordinate so that I can keep track and keep in my mind what the application of Newton's second law is when I'm applying in a centripetal coordinate. So now I write down Newton's second law in the centripetal coordinate. F sub c equals m a sub c. The net force in the centripetal direction is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. That's Newton's second law. And the only force that points that way is the force of friction. So that's equal to the mass times AC. Well, we know what A sub C is. It's V squared over R. So we now know what the magnitude of the friction is. It's MV squared over R. We now can apply Newton's second law to any problem where one of the coordinates corresponds to the centripetal direction. As soon as I'm moving in a circle, I know immediately that I have centripetal acceleration. And if I apply Newton's second law, I know that the value of the acceleration has to be V squared over R.